What's happening, everybody? It is Sunday night. Time for another episode of Still and Past Your Expiration Date. Being Thrifty Over 50, I'm your one host, Jay. I'm Pig. Hi, gang. How's Hi, everybody son, doing? My son wants to be heard. What's up, buddy? I know. I hear Tochi. He, he must hear uh, Tutu's voice. Uh, I don't know. All suddenly he starts barking. Like, what is <laughs> happening tonight? That's not his norm. <laughs> Mom's in a good mood. As you can see, I'm wearing my Ohio State shirt tonight. Go Bucks. We are now 6 and 0. Oh. Woohoo! Yeah, I don't have anything related, but go Packers. They just won. Yeah, Yay. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we're, we're now uh, ranked uh, number four in the uh, the coaches' poll. So that's cool. Yeah, next, yeah, next week we play a no, not, uh, not a good team at all, so we should win again next week. You know, we got a couple of big ones after that. So we'll see. Hoping for the best. And our Browns play tomorrow night. Who go Browns. <laughs> I mean, yeah, look how many night games we've been having. We're, we're, you know. They expected something big from the Browns this year. I hope so. Kidding. And darn, <laughs> Pittsburgh, if Pittsburgh would have won today, we'd been in first place all alone, but the Ravens won. So, in overtime. I should have a little artwork for uh, Peg's sports update. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you, know, I, you know, what can I say? When, when, uh, when mom was little and being the first child in the family, my father was quite a, a sports fanatic. Yeah. And uh, he started him off right away. I mean, I played baseball like a champ. I mean, I was on, you know, all-star leagues in the whole nine yards. And mom was a, a shortstop and a first baseman. And um, in 1948, when I was five years old, was the last time the Cleveland Indians won uh, the championship. So, you know, World Series. So I'm still waiting. <laughs> they better hurry. Mom's time is running out. But, yeah, so I've just been a sports uh, fanatic all my life because of my dad and, you know, he wanted a boy and he didn't get a boy until the third child. So, uh, so I guess everything kind of went to mom, but I love sports. You know, I love sports. So. Here's for us Cleveland sports fans. There we go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, thank God for the Cavs. Uh, in or this. <laughs> yeah. I mean, at least I get to, I got to see one championship, you know, honey, Yeah. which was so thrilling. I mean, you know, when, when you do win, there's nothing like that, that feeling. <laughs> it's so good. <laughs> That's for sure. That's for sure. But your Packers won, so you got to be happy. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. 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 And we. And, 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 I don't know. I didn't know. Yeah, De oh, I see Debbie's in the uh, Debbie Weeders in the in the chat. As the Seahawks won, we play them uh, week after this one after our Monday night game. I think the Browns play Seattle next, so we'll have to check that out. So totally unrelated to everything today, but I want to tell a quick sangria story. Oh. <laughs> so there is a boat still still going on. It's been operating for, I don't know, 40 years in Key West called the Sabago. And you go out in the Sabago, yeah. and there's a couple different trips. You can go out and just snorkel and come back, or you can do a thing called the Island Ting. And the Island Ting is you go out and snorkel, and then they take they move you over to the mangroves, and you hop into a, a kayak, and you kayak through the mangroves. And they give you a little bit of tour of the mangroves and explain the sea life in the mangroves and stuff like that. And then they dock someplace where you can swim some more, uh, you can have lunch, and you can drink. So Stacy and I were on the Sabago coming back. So once they're coming back, it bar is open, and they got you know, beer and sangria. And I had never seen sangria before. So this was, this was you know, late 1990s. I, I've never been a wine drinker. So sangria was never on my radar. And I see this uh, one of the girls that works about making sangria. So she'd taken all this fresh fruit. She had just cut it up, poured the wine on it, like dumped a bunch of sugar in. I'm like, Ooh, what's that drink? <laughs> <laughs> so uh, yeah, I drank an entire pitcher of sangria by myself. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> I, I was drunk and passed out and hung over by 6 p.m. <laughs> yeah. we, we got back in at like a three and we went back to the hotel. I passed out. We took a shower and there was a picture later of us at dinner. Stacy's having a beer and I'm having an iced tea looking like this. <laughs> that was my one and only encounter with sangria. It was yummy, but oh, man, you a whole pitcher on the open seas by yourself yeah, in like an hour. That's a lot. I, and I like, mom likes sangria a lot. I, I like it with the fruit and everything. So, but thanks for bringing that up, Becky. <laughs> 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 it's a good story, Beck. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, so what are we talking about today? Well, mom had a really nice lunch the other day with Irene Hunt, uh, a.k.a. Rini. And um, she's been selling on and off um, on eBay for about 10 years and trying to take herself to the next level. 
So I sat down and kind of went over her figures with her, um, you know, what she's doing, how many listings she has. Uh, for the amount of listings that she has, she's doing very well because she's got um, about 300 listings, but, you know, she's averaging around $1,500 to uh, $1,800 a month in gross sales, which I think is very good. Um, you know, and so we, we kind of kept bantering, you know, well, what do you do here and what do you do there? And she also has a, um, a booth in a consignment shop. So, you know, so her, she has uh, time there as well. So we just kind of kept going back and forth. And, you know, I said, OK, now, um, do you do everything yourself? Which she does. And I said, well, the only way, because if your time is already taken up fully by, you know, your family and, you know, sourcing and whatever you do. I said, um, you know, can you get someone in as a, get, get a helper, whether it's in the family or hire somebody or, you know, whatever the case might be. And we talked about her hubby, uh, maybe becoming the photographer like dad does for me. Cause boy, I'll tell you that saves in a lot of time. And there's no doubt about that. And uh, she did kind of run past him, but now with his job, just not going to work. And I, and she has an older child. And I said, well, see so if you can get your, you know, your, I think it was your daughter involved and uh, you know, maybe she could help you out. And if not, maybe you're at that point where, you know, you do need to hire someone to come in just to take pictures that alone would save her, you know, a lot of time, just like you, Jace. I mean, look, you know, if I didn't have dad, I probably would have hired somebody by now because what dad oh. does between, yeah, between the picture taking and he does do a lot of research for mom and, and, uh, and the shipping. So, you know, I'm at the computer uh, most of the time, just listing, listing, listing. And I, I'll do some research, but, you know, not a lot, a lot. So it's basically. Funny you say that because uh, I have a post I had scheduled to go live in the thrifting board in about an hour. Uh -huh. And it, it's, you know, we do these lifeguardisms, you know, little tips and tricks to help you out with your business. And mine tonight is going to be the only way. And it really wasn't to coincide with this. I was just cleaning out photos and I had an idea. The only way to take yourself to the next level is have someone do your pictures because yep. it's such a time suck that your way more, your talent should be used to source or to list or to ship yep. or, or to learn a new marketplace or to use social media. So mm -hmm. taking pictures, any monkey can do it. So you just give it to somebody like my dad and go here. Right. Go right, so right. so my, you'll see my post tonight. I have a okay. teenager doing pictures for me. And with a teenager, you have to be so specific Wait till you see what she decided just to leave in the photo. That'll be in the thirty <laughs> board in about an hour. Well, well, that's good. I mean, you know, but that's how you learn. You know, and sometimes they come up with better ideas than what you had. You know, in taking photos. So you know, but but to me, that probably would be Irene's best bet. You know, to get herself to that next level. Now, the other thing that she showed me that she's going to be doing. In fact, she's going to be my speaker at my November meeting. Uh, she's starting to take uh, uh, YouTube photos of her booth. And help to help promote herself that way, you know, in her sales. And uh, and she's got a really nice size booth. I mean, actually, it almost looks like a large room. And um, uh, you know, so I think if she gets herself promoted in the right direction, you know, that would really uh, help her sales a lot. Um, so she, basically, she was doing everything you need to do, except hire someone or get a family member to help out. You know, so that uh, that, that 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 to me is the bottom line. Like I said, I, if I had to do all this alone. Oh, I wouldn't. I I don't know if I could do it, Jason. I don't think I could. As a heads up, your Wi Fi is pretty weak. Oh, again? Yeah, we hear you fine, but yeah, it, it's almost like you're a ghost right now. You're so. Well, all right, you're so uh, I'm gonna go out and come back in. Yeah, and I got some pictures of my old booth, so I'll talk about that. Okay. But yeah, I want to give a refresh and see if it. All looks right, go better. ahead, honey. I'll uh, I'll go out see what I can uh, do. But but okay. before that, uh, Rich says like drinking Mad Dog 2020. Hey, I happen to have a Mad Dog 2020 story too. <laughs> Hey, I, did you see Rich says he's got a giveaway? I saw that, yeah. Okay, all right. You, you okay, bye. It. Okay, bye. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm sure all of us have played quarters at some point in our life. Have you ever played chandelier? Chandeliers is like quarters on steroids. So in quarters, there's one cup in the middle. You bounce a quarter. If you get it in, you tell the person to drink. With chandeliers, everyone has a cup, and there's a cup in the center. If I bounce into, say, Rich's cup, then Rich has to drink. If I bounce into my own cup, I have to drink. If I bounce into the center, you all drink your cups, and the last one down has to drink the center. So we played in high school with beer on the outside and Mad Dog 2020 on the inside. Oofa. That was, that was a little rough. Okay. Okay, you look a little better. Yeah, this, whatever the light is to your left is blowing you out a little bit. Okay. Um, you can angle it down a little bit. Is that too dark then? 
No, no, you're okay. But yeah, okay. Most, you're not a ghost okay. anymore, so that's cool. Okay. All right. Okie dokies. And uh, uh, yeah, uh, Rich said uh, they have two more tickets to give away tonight for ecom, so we'll do that uh, in a little mm -hmm. bit. But wonderful, uh, nice. Um, so I brought up some old pictures of my old booth because I used to have a yeah. uh, booth and an antique mall, mm -hmm. and uh, this shelf now hangs in my house with full of tiki mugs. Uh, I bought that badass shelf. If you look at it, it's all kinds of different size cubicles. It's a pretty yeah. badass shelf. It you was sure? at a uh, estate sale. So here's a little here's a little bonus tip that had nothing to do with our show tonight. Look beyond the stuff. This was hanging on the wall. I said, hey, how much for that shelf? And they said, well, the shelf is full of uh, collectible Avon bottles. So I just started taking them off. I go, okay, how much for the shelf? Well, it's attached to the wall with screws. I got my screwdriver. I'm like, Okay, how much for the shelf? <laughs> and they're like forty-five bucks. I'm like, sounds like a plan to me because I would never build that. Right, uh, right. Yeah, so we set up our booth in uh, Sin City Pickers. We also filmed there. This is back in the days of uh, Thrift Hunters, and then we actually had to move it within Sin City. We, so we went from yellow to pink, and I was quite proud of always keeping the booth full, yep, and tidy. And yes, maximizing the space of everything mm -hmm. we had. I uh, had a double rack of Hawaiian shirts in there. And the problem was, my problem, and this is what we should talk about. Yep. If you happen to partner up with somebody in a booth, make sure it's a partner that's going to carry their weight. Right. That's so important. I mean, it really is. Mine didn't. My, didn't. my partner was uh, so... He was invincible. Right. <laughs> Not <Yeah>. existent. <laughs> so I brought this mannequin because I was I was gone for a couple of weeks, and I when I got back, I found out the mannequin's shirt had been sold like the day after I left for two weeks, and he was in he was in our booth every single day, and never once in his head did he think to take a shirt off of the rack, yeah. and put it on the mannequin. So when I walked in two weeks later, I go, oh hey. Cool, we sold the shirt off the mannequin. How long has the mannequin been naked? Oh, two yeah. weeks. What? <laughs> I mean, common sense. It, you know, it's pretty basic. Put something back on it, whether it's yours or his. Who cares? Get yeah. something on there. And then the other thing was, towards the end, uh, I walked in the booth one day to bring some fresh merch in, and he had broken two coffee mugs, obviously on the way to put them in the booth. So instead of throwing them away... He had the mug there. The handle had broken off. He stuck the handle inside and put the tag on it. Broken coffee mug, $1. Oh, my gosh. Hey, I am not selling junk. Right. 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 In my booth. Yeah. So from the yeah. moment we had a booth, it was uh, it was a mistake uh, uh, having a partner. So make sure if you're going to do that, you know your partner's going to carry their weight. Absolutely. I mean, I, and I, I'm pretty sure Irene, I, her, she does it alone. Uh, she said she does do some consignments of uh, clothing for, for, for women and in women's clothing, you know, to add to, uh, you know, her area. So, you know, she's uh, she's doing the right things. And we're, we're going to go over this um, formula that dad and I always use when back in the day. You know, I had many uh, a brick and mortar. You know, mom and dad have done a lot of things over the years. And uh, at one point, um, I owned a uh, ladies boutique. I had a tanning and toning salon. and um, the bottom line was I was everybody I was paying everybody I wasn't making any money you know I as much as you you, you give it a whirl and give it a try and what you do uh you've got to really work your figures and when we get into that you know a little bit of a nice easy formula that I kind of put together for us you got to figure the bottom line before you even sign the, the paper because I have been there's a new um mall out by us that opened up not even a year ago and some of the vendors, I probably, I'll bet 10 vendors have already gone and, and new ones are coming in. So it, you got to be careful, you guys, because that if you're working just to pay the rent and everybody else, it's not worth it. Not worth your time, not worth your effort. You're just going to be okay. throwing those away. Yep, yep absolutely. And, uh, you know, we uh, we finally, the only thing that saved our business is the tanning salon when we added the tanning salon. Uh, the straight boutique, um, of course, I was an absentee owner, so that was not good. Um, I wasn't there. I had a manager running it. So that was a bad part on bad on my part. So you just you just have to be really careful. If you're going to take the plunge, cross all the dots and X's and O's and all that stuff. And, and, and <laughs> cross your dots. Yeah, cross your dots. <laughs> get all, cross get all, let me put it this way. Get all your ducks in a row. 
check your figures before you make the plan. All your dots in a row and make sure they are crossed. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so you have a little, you have a little breakdown here for yeah. Uh, I mean, this, this is, the booth. Yeah, this is just kind of random. Dad and I were having lunch yesterday. I said, let's go over this. I said, okay, let's supposing you have a booth space, and your rent is two hundred dollars a month. Okay, so then getting to and from your booth, you, you should. I, I would assume you should pop in there a couple of times a week to check on your place. Um, I kept it kind of close, that you know, uh, forty miles totally. Uh, you know, for the month uh, came out to cost of gas around $40 to get back and forth to your booth. I mean, that's something you don't even think about really, but you, you have to, I mean, you have to put in your costs here. So then when I went into the cost of goods, everyone, I did it on goods that were thrifted goods. Norm, my, when I had my boutique, my cost of goods was 50%, which is, you know, extraordinarily high. Um, so, you know, I did this at a 20% break, uh, breakout because I assumed they were mostly uh, thrifted goods. So I figured 20%. So if you're doing around $500 a month, 20% of that is going to be hundred dollars a month for your cost of goods. So that's how I came up with that figure. Now, uh, most places that are, are in consignment do take another fee on top of your rent, which is usually around 10%. So if you are doing, like I said, that $500 a month, 10% of that is going to cost you 50 bucks. So approximately you're at a, at a figure now of $390 a month, or let's just round it off and say $400 a month. So to, to have your payments of $400 a month, what do you got to sell to clear and make the profit? You know, that that's where you have to be. So if you take it down to your gross sales are between four and $600 a month, and you've already got $400 in, in your costs. So, you know, there's your break even point right there. So are you going to make another 200 a month? Are you going to make another 500 a month? You know, you have to kind of play with that and kind of see, do, do you have the kind of goods that people are going to want? I mean, it's, it's a pure guessing game. And like I say, I've seen so many businesses come and go, uh, and especially in antique malls, if you'll notice, they come and go quite a bit, you guys, because it takes a lot to cover the nut as we say. And then I didn't even really, you know, put the hidden costs down, Jason, but you've got to think of this on your hidden costs. You've got to think of the time that took you to source your stuff. I mean, you're, even though we love doing that, that's the fun part of the job. No one ever values that. So Nobody does. No. No, I, I want, it's no. like when I watch people argue on the phone with eBay or PayPal over $20 and they're like, I've been on the phone for three hours. I'm like, what in the world is your time worth? Exactly. No one ever puts a, a, a monetary value on their time. It's a thousand dollar item. Sure. It's a $20 yeah. item. Go do something else. Go list 10 more things. You'll be just yeah. fine. Right. Exactly. And then, and then that when we went, when we finished this, I'll, I'll go over that because that was one of the things that I asked Irene. So you've got your times now insurance. Uh, you, you've got insurance on your car. Do you have insurance uh, on your store for your goods in case something happens? Uh, some of you know that uh, down in Sugar Creek in Berlin area where mom goes quite often, they have two huge flea markets. Well, the one flea market caught on fire and burned and everything was a total loss. Many of the merchants had no insurance, so they lost everything. So, you know, you have to take that into consideration. So I haven't even put that in, you know, the totals that I just showed you. Okay. And then the next thing. Loss at the store. You, you can't get by without theft, you guys. I've been in business a long, long time, and there is always going to be theft. So you have to take that into consideration. Well, um, and it's just like those people who lose their mind over someone trying to pull a fast one and doing a return of something else. It is no different than if you had a brick and mortar. Right. That, right. That's the modern version of shoplifting. Yep. Can you have any business without that? Absolutely not. So it's going to happen. Just know that it's a fact of being in business. It yes, sucks, it's a fact, but it is. Yep. And so to get wound up, to spend time on it is silly because once you discover it, whether it's straight from your booth, like physically, or someone trying to pull a switcheroo, just yep. roll on. Right. Go to I mean, 72 Facebook groups to complain that you got swindled. It's just a waste of time. We all yeah, have totally, them there. Totally. Every one of us. I mean, Jason, I was looking at a, ton, a bunch of CDs at a, a, a garage sale yesterday. And I, good thing I was opening them as I was going through them. About ha more than half, there was no CD, you know. So someone had come along and probably started stuffing the CDs in their pockets or whatever. I don't know. But, yeah, so you got to be prepared for that. That That's going to happen. It's just, it's just a known fact. 
when you have a, a, a business like that. Wear and tear on your car, you know, I mean, don't forget when you're outsourcing, that adds up but things we just don't even think about at all, you know. Uh, and of course, so when you sell your goods, you got to pay income tax. So depending, I, I use that $50 a month, roughly on that $500, you know, figure that I was working with in regards to that. Um, but yeah, so, you know, so those are your hidden costs, everybody. So, you know, it, it looks, it looks really good on the outside. You know, you walk into these, some of these antique malls and they look busy, but what do you have to sell to, to, to break the nut? I mean, it's just that, you just have to really, really do your homework. Now, I know we have a bunch of, you know, different friends and have brick and mortars and they seem to be doing quite well, which I'm really glad that they are. Um, I think it's the smaller business person when you're just going into the booth space that I think you have to really, really do your homework and 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 know what's, you know, the traffic pattern. I should put that down. What's the traffic pattern like? Are you in an area where you're going to get a lot of traffic? This one that's out by us in Middlefield, Jason? It can't possibly have a, a lot of heavy traffic, and no. I think that I think that's why their, their turnover is so large there because they just you know don't draw that kind of a crowd in, you know, in mom's mind, anyways. Uh, and so, as Linda said, some antique malls require a, a longer term lease than just like hey. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I know. I mean, you know, and uh, I, I got a little note from uh, Jeanette Statler and she was thinking of, uh, you know, opening up a booth and uh, she said, oh, I'm going to watch tonight. To, you know, I don't know if she's in the chat. I haven't had a chance to really look over there that much. But, um, you know, it's just one of those. You got you just you got to do your homework, folks. So, Becky, uh, the the round uh, red no person picture has nothing to do with StreamYard. That's your YouTube. That ain't Facebook. When you when you're talking about uh, given permission for the Facebook info. That's Facebook. We're on YouTube right now. So I'm watching the feed just directly on YouTube, not even in within StreamYard. And you don't seem to have a picture on your YouTube. So that that's where you got to upload an avatar. Like Linda's got a picture on her YouTubes, but mm -hmm. Joyce does not. Okay. Got it. Uh, Linda also had a good, uh, uh, see her, her comment there, Jason, who had, she was an antique mall owner. Did you see that one, honey? No. Or did I miss that? Uh, maybe it's, yes, it, it, it's, um, after chicken fried steak, location, 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 right after oh, that. Oh, there we go. Okay. Okay. Hey, so, Ma, yeah. you know you can see all the comments right in the screen for the show. You don't have to look to your right all the time. Quit looking to your right. No, right here, where we work, you and I. <laughs> all the comments are right there. See them I, off here, right? Well, I know, I know, but, you know. Okay, well, stay focused here. Okay. <laughs> here's, how, here's how you do the whole show. I, well, I have to look over so I can see it all. <laughs> no, it's right here. That's what I'm trying to tell you. All the comments for YouTube are right here. But I don't see them all. I just see Linda's now. No, no. Look, my, <laughs> this is a little lesson in how to okay. use StreamYard. All right. Um, right. You should see private chat and yeah, uh, live I, comments. I do, I do see that. Private chat and live comments. Okay. Click on live comments. Oh, that, that's This is where I had trouble last week because it doesn't fit on my big screen. I mean, on my computer. Okay, well, then, you just, then you just have to adjust the size of your window. Yeah, that's what I got to do. And I forget how to do that. I know it's up there somewhere. Oh, <laughs> well, there it is. Welcome to learning. Uh, there it is. Okay, live comments. And there they are. Uh, <laughs> hey, it's always a learning curve for mother. Always. Absolutely. Yep. You never know. But but I hope that's helped uh, some of you out there, uh, you know, in making the decision. Um, it, I, 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 we've touched on it so much. The last 22 years of my life, I worked for someone because we'd had so many businesses. Some were good. Some were not good. And, um, you know, it's just one of those things. You take the chance. You hope it's going to do it. But uh, you got to be careful. Just just be real careful out there. I just don't want to see anybody go down the drain after you put in all that hard work. But but going back to if you do have someone you trust mm -hmm. uh, implicitly and you can do it with them, it takes half the burden off of you. So right. you only need half the stock in your booth. You only need half of the time spent there. Mm -hmm. And so uh, when I did my booth, I didn't know it wasn't going to be 50-50. Right. I assumed because sure. that, that's what you should assume. Yeah. And so make sure. But it can, it can help. So if you're like, I don't think I can. Do that full time, but if you got a buddy, uh, uh, a sister, a cousin that does the same thing as you, uh, and it, it would also be beneficial if someone had a different eye, but mm -hmm. 
but a complimentary eye. Right. So if I was doing tiki mugs and someone else was doing doilies, that's not really a good booth. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. But if yeah. I was doing tiki stuff and someone was doing mid-century modern, that's a good combo. Oh, that's a good combo. You yeah. Better. Here's a quick story. When my, when mom owned her ladies' boutique, um, the gal that I had as my uh, manager, um, she'd been, been a customer and then she kept coming and she said, you know, can I start working for you? So I had to start work for me. And then she became my manager. Well, lo and behold, she stole me blind, you guys, because when you're not a, an owner that is there, uh, we calculated over the period of a year and a half, she stole about $25,000 from us. We set up a sting. We caught her. Of course, she denied it and, uh, you know, blah, blah, blah. But, you know, so I've been burned. You know, you, you get burned. So you got to be really careful. Don't, 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 can't even trust your relatives, to be honest with you. <laughs> yeah, sometimes that doesn't work either. <laughs> So what, was, uh, what, what business did you do that was your favorite? Oh, um, oh, out of all, of, all the, uh, the ones that we've had, um, whew, I, I enjoyed the boutique because it was a tanning and toning salon, you know, so I really did enjoy it. But because I was an absentee owner because I was manager of Jazzercise in my area at the time. So my time was so involved with Jazzercise that mom didn't be a good owner. And that even though I enjoyed it, I loved going on the buying trips and, you know, all of that kind of stuff. But, you know, until I got a good manager, a real, real good friend of mine, and she took over and then I started to see a profit. But, you know, that would probably be it because it was a lot of fun. So in this day and age, unless you're living in the country like mom and Middlefield and all the little towns next to her, you know, definitely social media is a good way to drive traffic to your brick and mortar or your mm -hmm. booth within a brick and mortar. Um, Instagram's a great way if you can get a following, if you understand how to use the hashtags. Craigslist, pick out your, your good item or two, put it on Craigslist, but of course the address is not your house, it's your business. So, you know, that's a fine way to use it. Same with like offer up. If you have a booth and you had a good, really good piece or really good piece of clothing, put it on offer up and then drive people to your booth and then mention, hey, I got all this other cool stuff too. Right, so right, right, right. Is how you get people uh, through the door. Yep, for sure. So bottom line is good luck if that's what you're planning on doing. Um, if I can help anybody along the way, if you have more questions, please let us know. We'll be glad to help. Yep. And if you got us, if you're, if you've got a booth right now, let's uh, send it to me and, and maybe we'll, we'll do a, a, a group post in the thrifting board. Ooh, that'd be good. Everyone's booths. And, and that way we also, you know, I, I know what I liked when I put my booth together, but maybe mm -hmm. I was missing something. Maybe you did something better. So uh, that would be awesome to uh, share with each other. Yeah. Take a note. Yeah. yeah, I like that. That's I think that's a really, really good idea. For those that have booths. Yep. I like that. Super. And Linda would love to help too. So there we go. Got plenty of people that would love to help. Speaking of loving to help. Uh-oh. <laughs> boy, the segue is awesome. <laughs> All right, this Thursday, Thrifty Business, ah. all about Ecom Chicago with Rich and Nyla. Rich and Nyla yeah. are uh, two of the most awesome people in the world. Yes, they they, are. Uh, they live in the Chicagoland area, and they put on Ecom Chicago every year. So they're going to be my guests on Thursday night. We're going to talk about Ecom. We're going to talk about Chicago. They work together. They have a sign-making business. Uh, and we, we've had this conversation before, but um, it's always nice to check in with a couple who works together. Are you both still alive? You have not killed each other yet. <laughs> <laughs> Ted and I are coming close. <laughs> yeah. So we're going to talk everything Ecom Chicago um, uh, on Thursday night. And, and and like I said, and working with your spouse or significant other whilst at Ecom. Oops. Hold, please. I thought my things were in order. Apparently, they're out of whack. I don't, right. want, I don't want to ruin any surprises. Okay. There we go. I need that next, and then that next, and then that next. Whoops. I was way out of whack. There we go. Okay. All right. Coming back up. Here we go. All right. So uh, coming up quick, October 16th through 18th. If you haven't signed up yet, use Tiki 20 off to get 20% off of uh, your ticket. Now, here's what's cool. It's a three-day event. Day one is pretty awesome. It's a two thing. A two two rooms are going on. One, all the sponsors of the event are taking turns on stage demonstrating their products. And the other room where I will be 
is the coach's corner. <clears throat> and you can sign up for all these coaches. You get a 15 minute uh, segment. And I will say if uh, and I did it all day, I'm doing it all day, like eight hours. If mine doesn't sell out, if you want to take two segments, I am I'm more than happy to spend half an hour with you. So don't do that now. But when it comes time day of, if they have not filled up, I will definitely do uh, more time with you. Uh, Barbara Boshin is going to be helping you with keywording if you're doing uh, like things like Amazon. Chris Green is going to be doing uh, just general coaching, whatever you want to talk about. Uh, Chris is talking about Shopify. Uh, David Green, he's only got one sign up. He's a kid. If you have a kid, I, I would recommend sitting with David. He spoke last year. He was one of the eloquent 11 year olds I've ever heard in my life. Oh. Oh. He's, he's, he's written a book. He got on stage with no fear. He gave a really good presentation, better than a lot of the belts, I see. Uh, yeah. Uh, and he's going to be talking about econ for kids. So if you've got a kid or you got a niece or nephew, sit with David. I think it would be uh, it would be eye opening to how a, a kid can be because yes. we. Oh yeah, that's Chris Green's son. Well, it does yes. say son of Chris right oh, on the screen. So, um, so yeah, he is awesome. Uh, Dave, uh, Brian Burks from eBay's almost filled up. Uh, what else? Me and uh, Flavio. So he's talking uh, social blue bear. I'm talking. I'm talking. I'm, I usually do. Let me see your eBay store. Let me see where we can fix some things, make it prettier. But whatever you want to talk about, you want rum recommendations, you want who's your favorite Spice Girl conversations, I'll talk about whatever. So that's a pretty cool thing uh, as part of the event. And then I just put together, I have a yearly Tiki Bar Hangout. This time we're doing it at uh, Halakahiki. Now, if you've ever been with me to Halakahiki, we did this many years ago at Ecom Chicago. The drinks were horrible. All right. Horrible. The place, yeah. one of the best looking tiki bars in the country. They have, they have, they don't have the best drinks yet, but they've gotten about a thousand times better. And My it's goodness. only uh, uh, twelve miles from the hotel. It is the closest tiki bar, so yeah. we're gonna do that on a Tuesday night. So uh, if you get signed up for ecom, head over to uh, the ecom Chicago Facebook group, and then you can sign up and go to the tiki bar event. Now, Rich surprised me with two more tickets today. So here's the question. All right, let me give you the rules first. Please only answer if you can attend. <laughs> please. Please only answer if you can attend October 16th through 18th in Chicago. This is for a free ticket to the event. Not your airline. Not your Uber. Not your hotel. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I'm going to ask you a question. The first two people with correct answers can win a ticket. So are we ready? Let's do Are it. Are ready? Uh, and before I throw it out there, yeah, uh, Rich said I heard they remodeled. You didn't, you probably don't even know this, Mom, but they had this outdoor patio that could only right. be seasonal. They're building a tent over the whole outdoor patio, so it can be year-round now. Woohoo! So I don't know if it's done yet, but it's uh -huh. an amazing, amazing place. Yeah, it, sure, right. it really is. Oh, and then, yes, that's the bonus. Hockey Hickey, be your only chance to see me because Stacey has to leave the next morning. Oh. So that's the night before the event starts. So if you want <laughs> screw everything else, if you want to see Stacy, it's going to be Tuesday night at the Hockey Hickey. <laughs> yep. Cool. And uh, Rich said hotel rooms are 102 bucks a night. It's really nice. The hotel is attached to the uh, meeting rooms. And so you don't need to go outside. So if the yep. weather is shitty, you just walk down the hallway and boom, you're there. All right, here we go. And if breakfast is included. Can, breakfast is included. Yes, breakfast is included. Yep. If you can't attend next week and you don't have a ticket yet, the first two people to tell me this answer, name any other tiki bar in Chicago besides Halakaiki. <laughs> we talked about them enough. <laughs> yes, Jenny's not here to win all the prizes. <laughs> Jenny will be happy to know that she's still being discussed about it when she's not even here. <laughs> Poor kid. <laughs> Name me any other tiki bar in the Chicago area that is not Halakihiki. <laughs> now, Halakihiki's drinks are pretty good. They're not the best. They're pretty good. But they do have a good selection of rum. So if you're just like a Cuba Libre, like a rum and a Coke and some lime, plenty of rum uh, to choose from. So, uh, and, uh, and you know, if you just, and you don't have to drink if you don't want to. It didn't change we have an answer from Gene Ramos. Gene, Gene, 
Gene, you right. you won last week, Gene. Did I have to preface if you already won a ticket, don't win again? <laughs> I, I can't I can't give you a win, Gene. Yeah, you get one chance at winning at an event. Once you win, you can't win again. Gene <laughs> and Ginny. There's this. It's a new gin and genie and Ginny. Gene and Ginny rule. <laughs> oh, all right. All right. So it's for your husband. Okay. Oh, okay. So, all right. So good job. Then we'll, then we'll definitely give it to your husband. So good job. And then we're still looking for one more. All right. That's cool. I just figured you pulled the Ginny. <laughs> I figured Gene pulled the Ginny. Now, if you don't know what we're talking about, during the fourth anniversary show of the Thrifting Board, which you should go back and watch, we had a ton of prizes, and Ginny tried to win them all. <laughs> she got so excited to answer questions, she would just shout out the answer every time. <laughs> all right, no one else uh, able to go to Chicago. So here's the deal. Since no one else answered, if you're watching this after the fact, and you're the first person to comment below, with a correct answer, which by now you know what one of the correct answers is, <laughs> and then I'll give you a ticket. So I, I keep an eye, and I, I usually respond to almost every uh, yep. comment down below. So uh, yeah, so Gene just messaged me on Facebook like we messaged the other day, and um, I think Rich will need a separate email. So I, I hope Ron has one. So, but we'll figure that out off, off, off the uh, air. All right. All right. Is this a legit guess, Pollyanna Wilson? Island Party Hut? Because I never heard of it, and I got checked. <laughs> yeah, if, I mean, if that's one we don't know about. <laughs> yeah, that's wrong. Uh, yeah, if this is legit. Oh, my gosh. All right. I don't think it's not a legit Tiki Bar, but, but I, I can't argue it because here, here. Here, let me show you what it looks like. I cannot argue it. <laughs> now, yeah. as, a, as a public service announcement, even I've never heard of this place, even without going there, I know it ain't a legit tiki bar because <laughs> I make sure I hit all those legit tiki bars. All right. So, Pollyanna, you won. Yay. Yeah, hey, hey. Coming all soon, right. folks, huh? Okay. So, Pollyanna, do me a favor and message me on Facebook with your email and we will get you squared away. And if you got any questions about the events. Oh, by the way, when I do my speech, uh, my speech is always right after lunch, and I'm going to do some live shopping on stage. So the, there's going to be, I think, three or four people chosen. And so we're going to start actually shopping with you guys before I get up there. We're going to see how good you are at picking CDs and cassettes. So the And I, I, I try to figure out, all right, how am I going to decide who does this? Anyone who takes a coaching uh, session with me, I'll throw your name in a hat, and I'll pick out some names, and then those of you who do the best will win prizes, too. So. Good. Very nice. prizes. Yeah. Ah, oh, dang it. Oopsie. Oh, oh, I see what happened there. Okay. Now it's time for That's My Mama. <coughs> Funny, little, cute, little, interesting, maybe sometimes scary photos of us in our youth. And Woo! man, we were scary in this picture. <laughs> All right. This is, uh, this is my 30-year anniversary of teaching jazzercise. And so we pulled out... <laughs> Things that we wore back in the 80s. And as you can see, I have on a leotard and tights, the headband, <laughs> and the leg warmers, and bare feet. Because when we first started teaching jazzercise, it was in bare feet. The leotard I have on, I just had to buy it back in the day, cost me $125. <laughs> it was because it had gold thread in it, this Egyptian thing. And I still have it. I have not given that one up, believe it or not. It's still in mom's, uh, you know. Cedar chest for for us safe giving, but it uh, I tried out in 1982, gang, and this was 2012. This picture, um, so you know, I just it was a big part of my life, and still is a big part of my life, because I still go to my I still go to the same center because I, I I started that center. Actually, Dad and I started the center together and put it all together, and uh, then my sister became my partner. And I retired after the 30 years, and my sister is still teaching, and I still go three times a week. So jazzercise, ask my kids. When I first started teaching in 82, I was bringing Jason and his uh, sister and brother with me to a Burton, uh, a Berkshire High School in Burton, and they would go out and play while mom would teach her jazzercise class. And, uh, and then we'd pack it up, and away we'd go. So, yeah, a big part of my life. I mean, and jazzercise, I know I've said this before, I did celebrate their 50 years 
of fitness this year, which to me is just phenomenal. I've been with it a, a 38, 39 years, Jason, out of that 50. So I'm yeah. proud of that. Yeah, I'm proud of that. I should have given you some confetti. There you go. Hey, thanks. All so right, so, uh, yeah. We're actually in the process of cleaning my whole office. Stacy and I have been doing it for two days, getting it organized. And she said, hey, here's your box of pictures. I'm like, all right, let me see what I can pull out for today. About the seventh picture I pulled out, bam. Oh, wow. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> How about that? There's Judy Shepard Missit. Yep, the creator of Jazzercise. Jazzercise. And I'm wearing a WMMS buzzard combo Ooh. Jazzercise t-shirt underneath. Wow. Nice yeah, yeah, because we did, we did cross promotions with them back in the day. We did. Look at your hair. Oh my uh, gosh. For those of you who have never seen me with a full head of normal colored hair, no yeah. facial hair, there you go. See, I really have a cute kid. <laughs> oh, heavens. <laughs> I think but Susan's yeah. amazed right now. Whoa. <laughs> yeah. Do you, do you have, you don't know what year that is, do you, honey? That's got to be the early 80s, Jason. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. It's got to be, honey. Well, that was great that you pulled that out. <laughs> Uh, I was looking for something fallish, and then I saw that, knowing what picture you had, and yeah. oh God, how perfect is that? <laughs> One of these days, I'll dig out my tryout picture for Jazzercise. That's so that was still high school, and I had no receding hairline as of yet. No, no, uh -uh. I had normal haircuts as of still. I didn't have any earrings yet, so I yeah. got. I'm maybe middle school because you yeah, know, I, you once, could move. once high school hit, I was off and running. Yeah, yep, yeah, no stopping you then. <laughs> That's for sure. <laughs> yeah, and that's my uh, this. So for you uh, youngins here, that's a Swatch watch with oh, a yeah. Swatch watch protector on it. It was like a little jelly bracelet that you would fold over your watch. Are those those aren't? Uh, do they sell on eBay, Jason? I might even have some of them. Oh yeah, old ones. Uh, yeah, I mean they still make Swatch. Yeah, uh, I think I think Judy's on my leg. Yeah, she might be. I don't Maybe know. She's standing next to me. Oh, she's at. I think yeah. she next to me. I thought she was yeah. sitting in my lap. I'm like, that's yeah. weird. Now, and, and she's still alive. She still still does the routine. So, you know, she's still going strong. Good for her. That's a watch. Yeah, I was, I, I had a, I had an impressive watch game in high school. I, I yeah. had, I had a good dozen swatches and some other uh, uh, trendy watches at the time. Yeah. All right. Ready for scores? Not too many this week, but we got a few. Did it. Uh, all right. Um, this uh, is a vintage of the paint by number, everybody. And this was the four seasons that I thrifted uh, oh, a couple of months ago at most. And I, I, I was, when I picked them up and asked how much, I was I'm almost trembling because she said $5 for all four. I about died. I said, oh my God, couldn't, couldn't pick, pick, pick them up quick enough and sold them for the full asking price of $90. So that I would, you know, when that came through, I went, woo, yes. That's almost a hundred bucks. Yeah, pretty close. <laughs> pretty darn close on that one. Okay, then, you know, I was hesitant to purchase this blow mold because he didn't have a light. But I know you can purchase lights, but, you know, I didn't. And so I decided to put him up. I did pay $5 for him and sold him for best offer. Or is this SA35? Yeah. Oh, it's I sold him for a full price of 35 So that, yeah, so that was really good. So never hesitate, I guess. The blow molds have sold well for a lot of us. And I know they're kind of a bummer to, to ship, but. So wait, Leslie, you have those. You have the four seasons in your garage. A, are they painted? B, did you paint them? C, are you selling them? Or are they on display? A answer all those questions, please. Okay, uh, <laughs> they weren't mine. I did do. I did do paint by numbers back no, in the not day. Not you, not you. Oh, okay. Leslie says she has them in her garage. So I want to know: Did she do them? Oh, did oh, she oh. them? Are they on display? Are they in a profit pile? Is she going to sell them? That's what I want to know. Yeah. All right. and, and if you're going to sell them, sell them together, as you see mine. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, mine did really well. Okay. Um, this is a Spartina purse. I've talked about Spartina uh, many times on our show. Uh, always pick them up if they're cheap enough, you guys. I paid $2 for this one and took a best offer of $25. <laughs> yeah, so not too shabby. And then, Jason, mine sold right after you talked about yours selling. <laughs> Clown costumes are hot, I guess, this year, especially with you know, the movie. Uh, you guys, uh, I paid two bucks for this and sold it for the full asking price of what was it 30 24 24 bucks. Maybe yeah. I should have priced it higher, Jason. You're sold for what 20 or 20, 25. I, I popped this in just to show, uh, yeah, if you hadn't seen my post or th um, thrifty business the other day. I sold my outfit for 25, 
And I yeah. did it on, though I did it on one of the, uh, uh, I did it on offer up. So it was just cash money. Someone nice. spoke by today and bought a, a mask for 25 bucks. So uh -huh. I love using the local apps. Yeah. So, yeah. So clown costumes are hot guys. So if you've got any, get them up quick because they seem to be going really quickly. Uh, this is a nice Nick and Nora two piece pajama set. Uh, that I paid two bucks for and sold that for $20 on that one. Best offer I took. It was in nice shape. You know, I probably could have held out for more, but you know, you just like to move them. Now I'm real surprised that I sold the seven dwarfs, you guys. I mean, it's not, you know, somebody's got to have the use for them. It, 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 I paid two bucks for all seven. Well, actually there's eight. They had a double up on sleepy, I think. And then they also had some uh, pairs of gloves that they wore. Because when you, when you put this costume on, I was going to try and take a picture with the costume on. But you got to keep your arms down at your side. So you've got to be on the taller side because they're, they're kind of like a pillowcase. And, you know, and then you got your hands hanging down below with the gloves on. You know, whenever you see the dwarfs, they kind of look like that when in the Disney parade, if you've ever seen that. Anyways, they paid two bucks for them. And I sold them for uh, $22. Oh, I see here. Got it. Yeah, yeah. See, yeah, see there? Yeah, so it's not the easiest thing to wear, but hey, if they can use them, more power to them, I guess. Oh, and gloves? Oh, my. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, it, it was at a rummage sale, one of those, those church rummage sales where mom picked that oh, up. Here's where you should have a little chat with your uh, picture taker. Okay. Uh, a, I don't see the gloves in the opening photo, and we know most of our customers never oh, get that. Yeah, okay. you're right, you're right, you're right. And yeah. B, I don't even see that in uh, in your title. The gloves? No, I didn't. No, I didn't. Well, I'm glad, I'm glad, I guess I'm glad they sold, but you're right. I did miss the gloves. So, all right. And then uh, I, threw, I threw this in only because I guess t-shirts are kind of selling. I've been selling a few t-shirts lately. This was a Hard Rock Cafe one, guys, that was going to Canada. So besides paying the $14.95 for the t-shirt, oh, I, I spent two, two bucks on it, sold it for the $14.95. But his cost, you know, under uh, a, a pound or under was uh, $15. Fifteen seventy-five. I think he gave me in, in shipping, Jason. So you know he really wanted the shirt, I guess. So Benidol's has the exact same Nick and Nora. Ah, good. Uh, so Mark said no name in the title. So here's one thing I do want to point out. Uh, you know the words Seven Dwarves could be just fine on their own. The second yeah. you put Sleepy Dopey, Do now you're really talking about Disney. And Mom went a little more generic because. Yeah. Yeah, that way there's not really a ton of infringement going on here. So there are times when you should back off. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, I thought about but putting also, them in. Yeah. But also Disney, for the most part, didn't invent any of their their movies. They're all old stories. So, right. so there is some point where you can use them, uh, you know. Uh, so just keep that in mind. And then Leslie answered all my questions, I think. They are paint by. Uh, they are my paint by numbers. No, I did not paint them. They're a friend of mine that was showing them to me to sell at a garage sale. As they're paint by numbers, and he said, "Yeah, so don't sell it at a garage sale. Get it up on eBay for hundred bucks because ain't oh, no, no one giving yeah. me hundred bucks at a garage sale." No, no, most people oh, don't even know what that is. He has several others. One is the Large Last Supper. All right, cool, oh, nice, nice. Yeah, in fact, I had the Last Supper up right now myself. Yep, in that. And then lastly, um, the Marie Osmond doll that I picked up this summer at Hartford Flea Market. I did spend 12 bucks on her, but I sold her for $59.99. And boom, just like that, poof, you know. So away we went. Yeah. Awesome. That, yeah. Okay. So, all right. Do you want me to put this light back on for the hall, Jason? Is that better? Sure, yeah. Okay. If it washes me out too much, then just, just say so. Okay. Um, this must be my week for hats. I'm going to start with a uh, this little beauty here. This is a vintage, a Scaparelli out of Paris. All right. It, am I am I too blurry? Um, it's not that you're too. Yeah, yeah, you're too blurry. Sorry. Okay. Uh, Do you want me to, I'll go out and come back in. So you hold you you keep them going. Okay. Yep. Yep. Let me let me put myself back on the screen here. Hey everybody, <laughs> my, my Wi-Fi been good for a while. All suddenly today it's like, but man, can't get out of here. There we go. <laughs> okay, bye, mom. All right, let, let's 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 talk secrets about my mother while she's gone. <laughs> oh, you know, one time we should punk her. Keep, let's think about this. We should punk my mom sometime. Like, you know, pull a trick on her when she when she refreshes. Like, we all disappear or turn our back or something. I don't know. We'll have to figure it out. She comes back in the show. It's just we're into a different show. Oh, that'd be fun. Okay, bye. All right. Sorry, everybody. I mean, just so aggravating. It really is. Um, all right.
I don't, I, you know, Jason, I don't know what else to have him check. I mean, do you have any suggestions? No, we look good. Go. Okay. Go, go, go. <laughs> okay. All right. So, as I said, this is by Scaparelli of Paris, everybody. You can see the label there. Whoa. Woo. Yeah. Okay. And I did pay uh, $5 for this hat, but I saw one that sold for 51 one that sold for 75 and a guy's got one up almost like mine for $195. So I will probably try starting this around 75 bucks for my $5 investment. At the same place, look at this gorgeous feather hat. I mean, oh, it is beautiful. Paid $5 for this one. I'm going to list this for 50 bucks, everybody. It is in gorgeous condition, just gorgeous condition. Okay, staying with the hat theme. I don't know how many of you remember these these hats. These probably from the 1940s, Jason. These were uh, bridesmaids hats back in the day. I can remember my mother wearing one when in weddings that she was in. So these are here. I paid a uh, dollar a piece for these little babies, and I'm going to list each of them for between twenty five and thirty dollars on the hats. Everyone, no labels in these uh, at all. But I know they're old from from uh, what what I when I used to. Uh, see them my mom wear them okay this hey, is how dad ship the paint by numbers all together uh we put um we, we stacked them and we put um bubble wrap in between each one and a piece of cardboard between each one there and then know. just boxed them up in, the, in a way they went uh i think i probably shipped those fedex because of the weight they were heavy okay this hat <clears throat> is 100 percent wool by bowman hat company Doe skin felt made in the USA, stamped right in the in the bottom. Well, I'm going to show you that first. There's the label. But these are from the 40s and 50s, you guys. Anybody remember this kind of a hat? <laughs> oh, yeah, I <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah, these these were the thing, uh, Jace. And this was 50 cents. And Mom's going to list this one for around 40, 50 bucks. Uh, this this it's in beautiful condition. Really, really nice. Okay. All right, um, pick these up in my toll where actually daddy bought these and there are uh, a lot of, what is he got? How many has he got here? A lot of, he paid $5 for the whole lot. They're all the same. So it came to 31 cents each. So I don't know, a dozen, maybe, it, maybe a dozen. The world's tiniest TV trays. Yeah, I know. And, uh, and they are selling for like six and $7 each. So I'm, I'm debating, I think I might do like four to crack. You know, Solomon lots of four, and maybe and maybe even put up a single or or list one and just show that I have more available. What do you think? Which way? Which way should I go? Um, what would you do? Because you could do a multi quantity. Oh yeah, that'd be good. You know, uh, mm -hmm. and do it that way. But um, hang on, I gotta. Yeah. I'm, I'm I'm doing a little producing on the fly. Hold on a second. That's okay. That's all right. <laughs> because it, it involves this product that you just showed. Okay. All right, so, so keep talking about it for a quick sec. I got to. Okay. Do um, you want me to go on to my next item or do you nope, want to talk? No, nope. just talk more about those. Okay. All right. Well, a, a lot of you know toll wearers are hand painted. And I tell you, you guys, these were in gorgeous shape. Um, and we have, I have done very well with, with uh, my trays. And those of you know, mm -hmm. um, I know trays, I sold those pink and black ones real well. And. Um, <laughs> So I, I know this is normally a segment of Thrifty Business, but tonight, uh -oh. just thinking about it, Close Encounters of the Thrifty, kind, kind, kind. Ooh. So the other day, I'm working at my shipping table, and FaceTime rings, and it's my father. My father is not one to ever pick up the phone to just call you. <clears throat> so I answer the phone. I go, hey, Dad. He goes, yeah. <laughs> and I said, yeah. He goes, did you call me? I go, no, you called me. He goes, oh. <laughs> Hey, look at the trays I bought. <laughs> <laughs> so he didn't mean to call me, but since he had me on the phone, he's like, check out these little trays. <laughs> it's a wonder he didn't put the FaceTime phone up to his ear like he normally does. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. well, once he realized that he was ready to show me his recent score. So good I, job, Dad. Very exciting. Okay. Uh, All right. Uh, uh, and, and the toilet flush at the same time. I haven't had a chance to go through these, but I have got a bunch of patterns after we saw the show on the patterns, you know, the other night, Jason. And there a lot of them are from the early 50s. I mean, look at look at these Bermuda shorts here. Look at this. I mean, I you know, so I and they look in pretty good shape. So I'm gonna have to do some, you know, good sorting and, and go through them all. 
But it, it, well, they were originally were ten cents a piece, but today it was half off, so I got them for a nickel each. So five cents. All right. So what you need to do is get the stupid company back out there and put them right to the show when you refresh and show them how clean you are, because right now it's like you're in witness protection. What the hell is going on? So how you guys say, look, people, look how nice and clear it is for a bit. Yeah. What happens within I, I, three minutes? So who do so, I need to call? Who do I need to call? Your the, your internet provider. The internet provider. Have okay. Them up, have them watch this so they can actually see the deterioration of your feed right in the middle of the show. Okay. okay. All right. So do you want me to go out and come in again, or what do you want me to do? Uh, yeah, you might as well. All right. Sorry, game. All right. I'll do that quickly here. Yeah, <laughs> I, know, I know she's too fuzzy to see the pattern. It's, it stinks. And like I said, for a couple of weeks, we haven't really had any issues with her and her uh, uh, feet. And then tonight, boo. The good thing is her 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 best item I have pictures of. So if this continues, we at least can see it. All right. And you look pretty good. Uh, All right, yes. go. Okay. All right. So, yeah. So I'm saying, you know, a lot of great patterns here, Jason. Mom's just got to do more research and take more time. But uh, a couple of them that I did throw in were selling anywhere from $25 and up. You know, so there's a lot of good old stuff here. Old spirits. Oh, look at this one. I mean, yeah. So, yeah. So I got to do some, take more time and do some more research there. Mark, you are hilarious. My dad accidentally FaceTimed me. You think he's streaming anything? <laughs> oh, no, no. <laughs> My dad could. If his life depended on it, he couldn't stream something. No, he couldn't. Okay, look what mom found. <laughs> Hey, those are nice. Aren't these nice? My, they're, they're a salt and pepper shaker. Jason, it says C-A on the bottom. You probably can't. Really C period, A period. I I have no idea. Maybe they were, know, they were handmade. They're in really beautiful condition. They had $10 on them. I offered them five and took it. I probably will keep these. You know, Mom. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. So, all right. Now, at this, uh, we went to a 50% uh, off estate sale today, right around the corner from us. Wait, have you said quarter yet? Uh, I'm gonna. Okay, good. Because I was like, wait, did I miss any quarters? <laughs> yeah, actually, these were cheaper than quarters. These ended up being twelve and a half cents a piece. Do I? Does that count? Right, well, I'll still give you the the, the quarter dancing okay. around. So. All right. Okay. Um. Oh, and these the, these trays are thirty one cents a piece. Okay. Oh, so somebody asked what use for those for. Would those be like change trays? Yes. Yes. Change trays. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, so I picked up a bunch of cassettes. Some of them are early, Jace. A lot of Christmas ones that I'm going to put together. But for 12 and a half cents a piece, I, I didn't want to pass them up because they were in pretty good condition. And there's some really good ones here. Um, so I got, I, have, I got 12 Christmas ones. I know she just passed not too long ago, but I have a set of Doris Days here. There's three in her set. And along comes it comes with the booklet as well. Whoops. Oh, wow. Yeah. So those I'm going to sell separately, and I think I can get around 20 bucks for those. And, oh, and then I got to get Dad to get this one up right away, this Halloween one. Yeah, I just I just found a Halloween. Where's that Halloween one? It should be still. Yeah. Um, oh. Yeah, th this sells around between 8 and 10 bucks, honey, on that one. Yeah, I was cleaning today, and I, I found a Halloween cassette, too, party music. Yeah, now here's another one. Oh, look at that. Now here's another one with the booklet, and this is Reader's Digest, Joys of Christmas. The Joy of Christmas. There you go. Yep. All right, cool. And, yeah. and so these, let's see, Joys of Christmas, they sell for around 10 bucks. So you know, by the time the smoke clears, oh, Jason, have you ever seen this? Any Anything like this? The Battle of Gettysburg? Nope. Okay, so that was kind of different. Dollywood. You know, and these, the, the, some of these I'm going to group together. Um, I have two Oak Ridge boys. And here's an early Kenny Rogers. I, I see the CDs, but I don't see the cassettes. Yeah, you know? Kenny is not going to be worth anything on a cassette. Well, maybe I'll put Kenny with the Oak Ridge Boys. I mean, they're, they're, they're there you go. Together. Yeah, so I'll put that. So anyways, I got about, uh, I don't know, 15 or 20 of the uh, cassettes. And while I'm there, I, I said, I, I pulled this thing up, <clears throat> and I'm looking at it, and I'm looking at it. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> That's a badass alarm. Whoa. A, lar a digital alarm clock with a cassette player. And there's a cassette in it. You oh, yes, and it works. Bonus cassette. It does work. That's why I was trying to get to work for you before. But, you know, I don't want to make the noise. Excuse me. All right. While you're choking, I, uh, I, I'm reading yeah. the songs on this on this Halloween dance party favorites. Yeah. 
They started out Halloween-y, so they got Monster Mash, Ghostbusters, the Time Warp, and then Macho Man. Yeah, I don't really equate <laughs> Macho Man with Halloween. Uh, Bad Moon Rising. I'm, eh. Purple People Eater. Okay, we're back. Rock <laughs> Lobster. Hot, hot, hot. I'm like, what? Oh, that's not, no, no. And then Soul Man by Sam and Dave. I'm like, what left turn did we just take? <laughs> now, she, uh, this is by Sound Design. <clears throat> and they sell for around 30 bucks. And you gave it to me for free because I bought all the cassettes. So, uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Here, wait, I don't, I don't even have a thing for free. Okay, I'll just do this. You're on fire. I'm like, <laughs> just here, here, just take stuff. No one ever does that to me. Just take this stuff. Okay. Um, these two line uh, kits are, you know, still not uh, unopened. And I did look this. I think I'm going to sell them together. Would you sell them together? I know uh, no, they don't go together. They don't go. Okay, then I'll do each one separately. And I can probably get about eh, between 15 and 20 bucks per. Okay. All right. A um, couple things here, and then we'll get into the big items. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, I picked this up. I don't, like I say, I don't normally pick up Hawaiian shirts that aren't uh, uh, a name, but as you saw, I sold a nice one not too long ago, a couple weeks ago. This is a Caribbean Joe, which is kind of that common, you know, uh, you know, a spinoff of good Hawaiian shirts, but it's a pretty one, and it's new with tags, and it's a 2X, and that was the main reason that mom picked it out for two bucks, because I will put this up probably for around $25 because of the size. This, I don't know, I'm debating whether I'm going to sell it or not, but I picked this up for $5, I think I spent five bucks. This is from the, you know, the, the <laughs> I like that, Jace. Are the dog pound. I like it because it's by Puma. It has the Puma label down here, Jay. Yep. Let me get that out there. See? Oh, Very to cool. it, Puma. And uh, and it just says dog pound, which you know that's what we're we're known for is the dog pound. And uh, so it's not a specific name that's outdated. So that's I think we'll, we'll make it a, a good thing. So I, if I was if I if I do sell this, unless I take it on the cruise with us, um, this uh, it is a two X. Um, I probably would put this up for around thirty five forty dollars. Okay. All right, <clears throat> those of you who saw my post in the thrifting board saw the uh, the cross stitch that I found, okay? I'm, I know I can't show the whole thing to you guys, but, you know, here it is. And from all the uh, answers that I was getting uh, from everybody, uh, it seems like it is definitely a Greek mythology with sea nymphs, uh, I mean, muses, and the sea nymphs, I think, is what everybody was telling me. Dad did some research, and the frame alone, this type of frame that it's in, because this sucker is huge, um, the frame alone, it, if we were to sell just the frame, is selling for around $200. Uh, this is a 24 by 46 picture, guys, so it is huge. Uh, I, I'm still debating, Jason. I, we have, we're going to go to a store that has needlepoint out here in the country and, and take the picture with us and see if they can give us any more recommendations. Right, on that's a good idea. You know, because I, you know, I maybe I have a thousand dollar item here. I did pay twenty dollars for this, everybody. So, um, you know, I, I could have a real winner here. Um, so I, I am going to sell it. It's, it's, it is gorgeous. I mean, whoever did it put tons of hours in this needlepoint because it's huge, just a beautiful, beautiful thing. And I found that at our American Cancer Society uh, thrift store, Jace. Okay, all right, honey. Um, the last thing I thrifted. Do you have pictures? Yeah. Yeah, we stopped at a at an end, uh, uh, just a, it's a flea market in a part of town. There I'm walking down the first aisle, and there I look and see this thing hanging on the wall. And you know, you know how you get Jason when you see something really good and get so excited. I'm going, oh my god, I think it's good. Oh my god, let me go over and take a close look. So I go over, and you see that little green tag. They've got 125 dollars on it, but there's nobody around. Nobody in the booth. No, there's nobody. I'm going. Well, who the heck do I even ask? Finally, some gentleman comes up and I says, I need a little help on the booth. And he says, uh, well, the owner of the building, we think it's his booth. So I go way over on the other side of this building. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know, it's like, you know, I'm going around in circles. I told dad, he said, stay right here. I'll go get the guy. You know, I don't want to, you know, you never know. You know how things happen. Somebody walks in and pulls it off the, the wall. So the guy comes over and uh, so the two of them come together and I, I said, uh, would you take 75 for it? I said, oh yeah, I think we can do that. I, I mean, I couldn't believe it. I, I, they jumped at it so quick because the one guy said it had been hanging there for quite a while. So apparently somebody just didn't know what they had. So a lot of you I know have heard us talk about Whitco. 
Um, I called my son to help me out. I said, I'm pretty sure it is, but it was, it's in, in such beautiful condition that, you know, there was no dust on the horses. I mean, I couldn't believe it. And, um, so, uh, Jason contacted his friend and he said, yep, definitely Woodco. And this could be the one and only possible, huh, Jay? Yeah. So my friend married the granddaughter of, uh, Whit the guy who created the company Woodco. So he know he knows it all, and he was quick to respond. He was like, "Yep, Woodco," because I was like, "Man, I just the 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 back is so fuzzy. I've never seen anything that fuzzy before." And uh, he okay. says, "Yeah, he says if he gets a chance, he'll find it in the old catalog and send me over a picture." And this picture does not do justice about, about how big this sucker is. So, no. there you go. Yeah, there we are. I took it outside. You should have seen us. Oh my God! Well, we did hang it today. <laughs> Your, your dad, who's normally a perfectionist, it didn't quite center like he wanted, but it was just too hard for us to try and move it around again. But uh, yeah, it's a beauty, you guys. So uh, value, we're not sure, but four or 500 maybe, Jace? Yeah, it could be. Yeah, you know, since it's, uh, it's one of a kind, if you're a horse lover, not necessarily the tiki lover, you know, but but I have all different kinds of Whitco in, in my uh, my great room. And so that's where this one went. And, uh, you know, if I, if I go to sell it, Someday, hopefully, it'll be worth a few hundred bucks. I'm sure. Yeah, if you if you find someone who's into horses, it doesn't have to be necessarily tiki, but who's right. into horses and Elvis, because Elvis's jungle room was all yeah. he basically just ordered the catalog from yep. from Wicko at the time. He's like, I want that, 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 and that. So to have a Wicko piece, if you're a horse person in your barn or in your in your tack room, and uh, you like Elvis, this would be an awesome piece. So oh yeah, for sure. Let Good me ask you a Let yeah. me ask my son. Have you been to uh, Graceland yet? No, I've never been to Graceland. What are we? I've been to Memphis one time for work. And we didn't have any time to go. So, well, you got to get your butt there. <laughs> I've never. I've only been to Memphis at one time for work. And the only the only thing we got to see that wasn't work was the Peabody and, and to see the ducks. That was it. Oh, oh yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Got to do it, honey. Got to do it. And I think, uh, I think that's it. That is All it. Right, cool. All right, we will be off. I think for two weeks. Uh, mm. We come uh, head to Chicago next Sunday. And then I actually mm -hmm. have to leave the common day early, which is unlike me, because I have to get to uh, Palm Springs to give a speech there, too. So very busy next week giving speeches in two radically different climates. So I have to go from jeans to shorts. And uh, <laughs> I'm talking about uh, flipping media and then the birth of the Tiki Bar. So so all over the map with my speeches. So thank you, everyone, uh, for tuning in tonight. But tune in on Thursday night. Come to hang out yeah. with... with uh, <laughs> Rich and Nyla, and uh, we'll talk ecom. We'll talk what it's like to work with your spouse. Yep. And uh, I saw Rich say that he, I don't know where the it is right this second, but they added Etsy to their portfolio of uh, websites they sell on. And they're right. very happy they did. Uh, it's doing quite well. So that'll be a great thing because I did a post today. Show me your latest sale on offer up. And only like two people replied. That tells me. People aren't using all the different ways to sell. So mm -hmm. to only have two replies by the like hours later tells me y'all aren't using offer up, and you should yeah. be. Uh, oh, oh, oh. I, 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 yeah, uh, I did. Ha I I sold a, a blow mold on uh, a Facebook Marketplace. Met up with the people that. today, and uh, Dad went with me, and and they stopped, and we you know met somewhere and. Paid me cash, and that's that's my first time on selling something. No, second second item on on marketplace for mom. Yeah, I uh, uh, today someone came on the, the uh, uh, Freddie from um, Nightmare Elsewhere. Thanks, I think it was name all of a sudden. Uh, mask. They drove up to my office. Mm -hmm. He said, "I'm here." I walked out. I handed him a mask. Gave me twenty five cash. I turned around, and walked back to my office. That, I that know. Cash. So I paid three bucks at Savers for it. Yeah, twenty five cash, no fees. Yeah. And uh, you should be using it. So if you've seen that post and you haven't tried using it, try it. Now, if you're unsure of meeting people at your house, meet them at the corner. Many police stations let you meet there. We live equal distance between two grocery stores. So we always meet people at the grocery store. That way, if they don't show up, we're going to go get our groceries anyway. So it doesn't yeah. really matter. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. So, yeah. Mom's been, uh, I, I'm excited because it's it's doing well and, and I'm doing my eligible offers still on uh, eBay every day and been selling a couple of things here and there. You know, I, I mark them way down because it's old merchandise and I just want to get rid of it. So it's been doing real well for mom. Okay. Yeah, I said they'll miss you in Chicago, but they're excited <laughs> to see us on Thursday. So, all right, everybody. Okay. All right. 
Thank you very much. Have a wonderful evening. Debbie, you're late. <laughs> because <laughs> Debbie's saying hi, and we're saying bye-bye. So for selling past your expiration date, being thrifty over 50, I'm Jay. I'm Peg. Bye, everybody. Thanks for watching. We're gone. Bye, Debbie. <laughs> 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 um.